Hello class, welcome to the second of three lectures on sequences and series. Today I would like to talk about series with you and how to find them. And then next time for the last one we'll get into the calculator and what is called sigma notation. So last time we saw that there are sequences of numbers, which is just a fancy way of saying lists. That sequences are just lists and series is just a fancy way of saying sums. That when you've got a bunch of numbers that are in a list, that's called a sequence. They're separated by commas. When you're adding them up as you go, each time the new thing comes, you just add it to the pile. That's a series. And there are lots and lots of different kinds. There's stuff that has no clear pattern, things that are difficult, but the ones that are easy, that you're gonna need to know for ACT and things like that, and real life, is arithmetic, which is made by uh, addition. These are the ones when we are just adding each term is equal to the previous term plus some number. Or geometric, uh, which is when we are multiplying, which is when each term is equal to the previous term times something. So that's the two basic kinds there. And we looked at sequence mode in your calculator when you press mode and move over to sequence and then you've got something that's kind of like um, the sort of sequence notation that we use in math where we have subscripts except the calculator uses parentheses where we think where we say things like u of n min and um, u of n equals u of n minus one stuff like that so that should all be review and we are going to look today at how to find arithmetic uh, series and geometric series, how to find stuff that goes up by addition and stuff that goes up by multiplication and how to add them all up. So first of all, arithmetic um, sequence series. And here I have a short story to tell you. There was a mathematician who was not born a mathematician, just born a boy uh, named Gauss. And Gauss was a genius of the highest caliber. And his teacher, poor teacher, discovered this when he or she tried to uh, keep him busy one day. He was, you know, in third grade, um, third grade, you know, age, but in high school. And the teacher tried to occupy him by saying, just, and the teacher got super frustrated at him and said, add up the numbers from zero to a hundred. Add all those numbers up. And uh, Gauss sat down and five seconds later handed her his slate with the answer on it. So that didn't occupy him at all. So what Gauss realized was that he could just pair up the numbers. So he was given the task of adding, not zero, but a one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six dot 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 plus 97, plus 98, plus 99, plus 100. And what Gauss realized was that this and this, the first and the last, make 101. And so do the second and the second to last, and the third and the third to last. That over and over again, he's gonna be able to group them together and make uh, 101. And so how many pairs is he going to have? Well, he's got a um, hundred numbers here, so there will be 50 pairs, just half of that, and then each pair is worth the first plus the last. So if you just follow that pattern, you get 50 times 101, which is uh, easy math, which is 50, 50, 5,050. So this pattern that Gauss found is now useful to us all over the place, that if we want to add up uh, a sequence or a series, so for example, suppose somebody told you that uh, there was a list of numbers that started with seven and then 10 and then 13, on and on and on, uh, adding three every time, and they said um, add up the first uh, 10, ones of these, ha add up the first 10 uh, terms in this series. So add up 10 of them. Well, all we have to do is figure out what the 10th one is, add that to uh, the first one, and then multiply by half as many things as we have. So 
if we are clearly adding three every time, I think that's a pretty obvious pattern, then how many times have we added three on the tenth one? Well, we didn't, we don't do it ten times, we do it one less than that, because this one didn't have any three in it, but each successive time, so nine times to get to the tenth item, we've added three. So seven plus uh, three times nine is seven plus 27. So then the last item will be 34 in this list of 10 things. And we could have gotten there by just adding three, but hopefully you see the pattern and we can do this for lists that are too long to do that. So the first plus the last is uh, those two there. We've got 10 items in our list and we want half as many as that. So that's gonna be five times 41, which is 205. So adding up seven plus 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus 19 plus 22 plus 25 plus 28 plus 31 plus 34 makes 205. And I hope once you get used to this pattern, you'll see that it's quicker than the long way. So if you're thinking about that, in terms of a series, if you're trying to add up a, and this is an arithmetic uh, series of up to the nth term, then you're just gonna say that's n over two times uh, the very first term plus the last term. So that's the formula for an arithmetic series. Now, more complicated than that, and this is gonna get abstract, maybe I'll do the, the normal one first and then we'll come back and we'll check the, and we'll talk about the abstract way. But I do wanna practice abstract thinking with you. So suppose we wanted to add up a geometric uh, series that had six terms in it and each one grows by multiplying by three. So we'll start at seven and then we'll get 21 and 63 and 189, and 567, and 1701. Okay, so we could of course just put those in the calculator, add up six numbers, but I'm trying to show you how to do this for stuff too big to mess with. So the pattern is we're multiplying by three, that each time we multiply by three. And this could have made a huge list. We could have had the sum of the first hundred of these. So if I want every single term to cancel, if I wanted to find a way to try to just be, to simplify this list, then what the clever idea that somebody had was, was to say, well, take that common ratio and subtract that much from that many times itself from it. So what that means in this case is minus three times the uh, series up to six. So, so think about what that would mean. What would negative three times this exact same list of numbers be? Well, the seven times negative three is gonna be negative 21. And the 21 times negative three is gonna be negative 63. And on and on down the line, we're gonna get the exact same numbers, just shifted over uh, one, except we didn't get that, there was no seven. And then this one makes negative 1701, and then 1701 makes negative 5103. So we've got the exact same list, but just shifted over and negative. So it's one place off and each one is negative. So if we add these down, what's gonna happen? Well, on the left, s plus ne uh, minus three s is uh, negative two s. And then here, there was nothing for the seven to get together with. So the seven just drops down. But the rest of these all cancel, 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 cancel. And I'm left with only negative 5013. 5103 there at the end. So if I just, um, seven minus 5103 divided by negative two will get me the sum of those numbers. So this is maybe even better to do by hand because it lets you skip how to do 
all that other hard math and just have one easy problem. All right, so now let's do the abstraction. Let's talk about what this would mean in general. How can we do this for any series, any geometric series? So we're trying to add up some geometric series up to the nth term. What we're going to start off with is our uh, term number one. And then each time we calculate the next one, it's just r, the, the common ratio, times that first term. And let me write that on the other side. It's just t sub 1 times r. And then the one after that is going to be t sub 1 times r squared. And the one after that is going to be t sub 1 times r cubed on and on and on and on. And the last one didn't get multiplied by r n times because it was one less than that. It was just, we're, we're having a list that is n long. And so the last one is t sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay? So now we want a version of this list that will cancel every term possible. And so it needs to be r times bigger than the original list. So if I multiply by negative r s sub n, then again, that same thing here where we're going to get the shifted over version of everybody, we're going to get negative t sub 1 r plus, or minus, uh, t sub 1 r squared minus t sub 1 r cubed, on and on and on and on. And then this last term will, um, and I'm just going to skip that part there, I'm gonna, will, be, will be present but negative. And there will be uh, one more, I keep writing plus, there will be one more minus t sub 1 r to the n. So now, let's add these down. We've got s sub n minus r s sub n equals, and then these all canceled. Cancel, 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 uh, cancel, and we're left with just t sub 1, the first term, minus t sub 1 times r to the n. All right, so I see common terms on both sides. So I'm going to take out the s sub n and get 1 minus r over there. And here I'm going to take out the t sub 1 and get 1 minus r to the n. And then if I just divide by 1 minus r on both sides, I get how to add up a geometric series. So a geometric series is equal to the first term times 1 minus uh, r to the n all over 1 minus r. So that's, that's pretty crazy how big of a thing that can solve, that this makes huge, huge math much more doable, much uh, actually solvable.